Hey right, guys, Ken from Miniature War Gamer Warriors, and don't forget to check out our Facebook and Patreon pages. Links in the comments below. Enjoy the video and see you again soon. Hi there, guys, Ken from Miniature War Gaming Warriors, and it's Monday, so it's time for another ramble. A little bit of a twist to this one, as all as all other rambles, we never have a straightforward thing. Uh, basically, I'll go through what we're doing today. Um, Gonna have a look at some models I've done in the last week because I've been off work, which has been really nice, really nice break from it all. Um, we're also gonna be talking about burnout, hobby burnout, and uh, how we can all get through it and push through and get to the other side. So let's start off with uh, hobby burnout. So what is hobby burnout? Hobby burnout is when you are absolutely bored of painting. <laughs> you've had, oh my God, you've had, you've had enough of it. You can't look at that plastic model. You can't look at the metal model. You don't wanna do it. You're like, ugh. Every time you even think about it, it's just, uh, it's not a nice place. I, I've been there, I've been there a few times. Uh, Liam's been there, we've all been there. Um, we all know how it feels, it feels horrible. Uh, so here are my top tips of how I push through hobby burnout. First tip I do, uh, whatever I'm doing, so if I'm painting, I then start building. So I will um, stop painting and I will do something different completely. I will do the opposite to what I'm doing. So whether that can be cutting out some plastic models um, and put them together, uh, cleaning some metal models uh, before I uh, prime them. Um, it could be, for example, transferring some paints, uh, dropper bolts, just anything to do with the hobby. As long as you're engaging with the hobby still um, and pushing through, you'll find that you'll want to start painting again, for example, or you'll want to start building or playing again. And that's, what, that, that's like the main first thing. Do the opposite to what you're doing. Um, or sit down and think to yourself, what actually, what do I actually want to do? So you've got, like I did, right? Prime example. Um, I've got 30 guys I need to paint for the Africa Corps. I didn't want to paint 30 guys for the Africa Corps. I could not be bothered. <laughs> I was like, I can't do 30 of these at once. And it drives me nuts. It's assembly line painting big time. Um, and I'm like, nah, I can't paint all these boots. Not the boots, <laughs> for example. So I broke it up and I, uh, I got five models um, for the Africa Corps. I got then got five models that I uh, had for Fulcrum Jaeger. Um, I got five models from SS, for example, um, and I painted the five Africa Corps. Then I painted five Fulcrum Jaeger. Then I painted five more Africa Corps. Then I painted five uh, the SS, and then I painted five more Africa Corps because it breaks it up. Um, and that, that's tip number two, break up your painting. Um, don't feel like just because you've got one project on the go, you have to just stick with that project and completely finish that project and then move, then you can move on to the next thing. I've learned that in a very bad way, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> well, not for me anyway. It is definitely not the way for me to do it. Um, I'm finding if I have smaller projects on the go. If I get bored of one thing, I can start something else up. It's like in the back of my head right now, I know if I get start getting bored of this, um, I can immediately go and get some terrain um, and start doing some terrain stuff. And that's tip number three. Do more terrain. <laughs> you don't have to do uh, models all the time. You can do some terrain and terrain is awesome. It's like, I know I've got some MDF terrain um, and I'm going to experiment with it. It's, it's kind of like a little treat for me at the back of my head at the minute. As soon as I've done the Africa Corps, because they're nearly finished now, I can go and get one of my MDF kits, put it all together, and for the first time ever, I'm going to uh, use my airbrush on it, which I'm quite excited about using, because the airbrush has been phenomenal, I might add. Um, so I'm going to put chinchilla sand uh, that you can get from a local pet store, you know, PVA glue around it, chinchilla sand all over it to give it that like really nice texture and then I'm going to spray airbrush it and it just gives it that really nice texture I've, I've, I've seen it done before and it does look really nice um, and it's gonna be my little treat because <laughs> you've got to give yourself a little treat every now and then. Tip number four I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you tip number four because tip number four is a handy tip so link kind of links into number three Good God, that's a lot of models. All right, tip number four is find yourself a box. All right, it's probably already got one. Put all your models in it. 
Okay, right, like that. And then what you do is you don't look, you stick your hand in and you pull something out and then you paint that. Because there's, I've, I've seen it many of videos and I've, and I've heard about it a lot. People can't decide what they're painting because they're not finished with painting what they're painting. Sounds a bit blurry, but that's what I got that box for. Um, so when I fancy it, when I fancy doing a bit of painting, blisters are great because you don't get a lot of models in a blister. So there's three guys in there, yeah? I could pick that, I could pull that out and I go, oh, there's three guys there. Bang, I can get them painted in an evening. Happy days. And then you feel like you've achieved something. Uh, exactly what I've done with uh, the Royal Navy stuff, which you'll see later on, which I'm really happy with. I, f I felt the boxes and I was like, I've got some chindits in there, I had some Royal Navy stuff, and I was like, I wonder which one I'm going to get. And pulled it out, it was the Royal Navy, and um, I was really excited about painting them because I didn't think I was going to get to paint them for quite a while if I did it in the same way as I normally do. Uh, a bit like the Warhammer Epic stuff, when I did that, I literally painted all of my Warhammer Epic. Is, is done. <laughs> I've, I've painted it all. It is it's done, um, which is nice because I know it's done. I can just pick it up and I can play with it. But yeah, it's happy days. Happy days. Final tip to get through burnout: <sighs> listen to audio books, uh, YouTube videos. You've heard it all before. Uh, I've listened to a really good uh, YouTube uh, series uh, called Let's Talk on um, I think it's Gorilla Miniatures. Uh, he's a Canadian guy. Um, and he's done a nostalgia one. It's the guy he does it with as well. It must be. It's, I think it's his long, long time friend. He's known for years, but they've got a natural chemistry when they talk about the hobby. You can feel the passion burning from them, which is really nice to hear somebody that's really passionate um, talk about the hobby. A bit like me. <laughs> My own plug. <laughs> But um, yeah, the Let's Talk series, um, I'll link that in the description because it is really good. I'm sure a lot of you guys have subbed to him already, um, but it is really good. The like an hour and a half, is, the nostalgia episode, I've listened to that four times because it's just so nice hearing about old Warhammer Fantasy stuff. Um, he's done like a Black Friday one as well. Uh, oh, I can't, passion, he's done one about passion. Fantastic, really, a really good listen to. Audiobooks wise as well. I've been listening to an audio book, World War Two. If I'm painting bolt action, if I'm doing Space Marines and stuff, I will listen to uh, Horace Heresy bits and bobs. But they're there for me. They're vital. I can have a film on or the TV in the background. It's not too much of a problem. Um, I try not to though, because I don't get as much done. Just an audio book's a lot better in that regard, um, or just a podcast. But yeah. No, happy days, but I'm going to pass over to me again on the table to go through uh, some of the models I did um, last week while I was off. And uh, I'll see you again on Saturday, next video. And thanks very much. Right then, this is the first lot of guys I've managed to paint on my week off. So this is a load of Germans that I've done uh, for the Africa Corps. Basically what I did was I did like five at a time. So I'd have five of these. Uh, guys all primed and ready to go. I'd have five, say, Volkswagen Jaeger um, models as well. So I'd paint five of these, but then I would paint five Volkswagen Jaeger. Then I would go back, paint another five of these, and then maybe paint something a bit different, um, just to break it up a bit. And I found that has really helped me um, plough through models compared to um, just say doing 30 of these at one time. I found I could get a lot more done because I was quite excited to do them. So. Uh, yeah, these are the uh, Africa Core guys, looking pretty good. And uh, I made sure, instead of just painting them, when I painted them, I based them as well. So they were completely done, so I had five guys. Because a lot of bolt action stuff, you only need five men. So five man squads if you really want to use them. So technically I could use just, just the five. So uh, that's another incentive. So you've got five guys ready to go, ready to play with. Uh, yeah, and I think they look pretty cool. Uh, the only thing I would change ever so slightly is obviously I did a grey uh, spray prime uh, with the Gracia and then I did a prime with this one shot stuff from uh, from MIG which is really good value actually. I think the normal RP was 650 and that's like a 100 litre bottle I think, it, 100, yeah 100 milliliter bottle. Um, but I would just paint the faces white which I've done on a few of the models, well 
quite a few of the models. I've just painted them white just to make it pop a bit, a bit like this guy over here. He's the one that's just done in complete greys here. Uh, this is with the darker grey. So yeah. Right. So the next thing I was uh, painting was uh, some more late war Fulcrum Jaeger. So I've got five guys here now. So I've got could use an NCO. I have two riflemen. Well, I could have four actually for assault rifles. I could have all five assault rifles, or uh, I could do um, sorry, not all five. I could do four and the uh, machine gunner, and one be the loader, which is this guy here. Uh, so that's why I give him an assault rifle there because my late war stuff I'm going to use assault rifles only. Um, they're going to be like a veteran squad. <laughs> So that's the whole point of these. So the plan is to put another machine gun, because I've got I'm gonna make up twelve men. So I'm gonna make up another machine gun, another loader, but I'm gonna arm them all with assault rifles. So I could take the two machine guns out and have a ten man assault rifle squad. Um and do it that way. Or I could put in a five man machine gun squad like I've got here. Um so yeah, the two machine gun squads for the Fulcrum Jaeger Late War would be quite cool as well. But I've based them on uh, Luke's APS stuff. Uh, this is uh, the woodland woodland stuff so it's more like uh, try and put it in focus just here it's like that which you guys will probably agree looks bloody good um, this guy I've stuck a uh, a tough down and I'll probably do that for the rest as well but at the moment they're ready to go so that's those guys and I'll get some more on there now so here's some more Fulcrum Jaeger uh, I've done some uh, early war style this time and you can see the are one with rifles I've given one guy a Panzerfaust uh, just in case I want to take it because uh, you never know <laughs> but he's still got a rifle so I can go either way with it to be fair I can uh, give him the Panzerfaust or not but there's a model there to mark that but I've gone with the classic blue uh, like helmets with uh, most of these guys I want to try and get as many of these blue helmets in there as I can and I haven't done any camo or anything like that on the uh, other type just there I've left it like na like plain because I want to distinguish them out. Uh, these guys I didn't base on the woodland camo, I based those on like a, um, I think it's either Highland Grass or it's a spring one from Luke's APS again. That's, this stuff is amazing, really, it really is good. Um, I can't, <laughs> to be fair, I can't flaunt it, so it does, uh, it really does make it so quick. And he's got this fast drying basin glue as well, this PVA fast drying, and it is quick at drying. It's probably 15 minutes and it's like, you could probably play with it um, in quarter of an hour. So obviously overnight it will dry solid, but it is, it is really good. So I can't I can't knock it. But you can play with it in about a quarter of an hour. Happy days, really. But yeah, that's the Fulcrum Jaeger. I'm uh, quite happy with those. So we'll move on to the next stuff. Right. So these three guys here are my first mixture of contrast paints. So they're a mixture of contrast and I've put a little bit of uh, just normal standard Vallejo paints on these um, I'll explain why in a second I wanted them, they're, they're, Waff, they're, they're the Waffen SS um, I've tried to do it in the uh, I think it's the oak tree camo, the spring spring uh, oak leaf camo I think it's called uh, yeah I'm pretty sure it's oak leaf um, so I've got a grey with a brighter green over the top of it uh, but the trousers as you can see that green the uh, grey is actually field grey from uh, Vallejo. Uh, I'll show you the one. German field grey. So there's the Vallejo number there. Uh, 730 and 102 on the rack. I find that's quite handy actually. That number there is actually the slot on the actual Vallejo rack. So if you look in slot 102, that would be the colour. I never knew that, um, which I thought was quite cool. But. Um, yeah, that's that green, or green grey as I should say, so I think it looks quite banging. Um, the actual jackets themselves are skeleton horde uh, on the base, and then I've done a couple more Vallejo colours, which is like the Vallejo uh, bright green, um, which is, I will give you the number here, uh, which is a bright green camo, uh, which is 80 on there, which you probably won't, yeah, 80 on there, and 70. 833 uh, for the green and the grey oh, excuse me and um, the grey was natural grey which is 70992 and 160 on the uh, 
on there. So I did the grey first and then the green over the grey and I used a bit of sponge. Uh, but that's uh, WAF and SS and they're based again on the same uh, same stuff as uh, the early war Fulcrum Jaeger. But the rest of it's contrast. Um, but I just I, I really did want to make the trousers a little bit different for these guys, uh, and they're they're predominantly early war. So um, I'm pretty sure the the oak tree was early war. So even if it wasn't, I'm going to use them as early war because I don't really mind. <laughs> uh, they just need a varnish um, just to seal it in. Because I've noticed um, with this airbrush primer, it can chip quite easily um, if you you know you have to stick a varnish over it. So these will be getting varnished probably tonight. Uh, but these guys make up uh, a mounted unit, so I'm really excited about this. So the next guys I'll just show you now I'm, I'm buzzing about, to be fair. Right, so these guys I am buzzing about. This is my first ever cavalry I've ever done. Uh, so this is the Waffen SS uh, cavalry set. So it goes with the other three guys. So they were, the other three guys are dismounted. These guys are the mounted ones. Uh, there's two sets that Warlord do. Uh, this one is with the uh, NCO. Um, I wanted the other set as well, which has got a light machine gun on it, uh, which I was re I was really gutted they didn't have it in stock when we were up at Warlord. Um, I'm going to have to get that because uh, you have to take these in a minimum of six mad squad. Um, so at the minute I can't actually play them, which is a real shame. Um, so I need to get another three. But again, these were the same... Um, as the other ones, so they're a mixture of uh, contrast and non-contrast. All the horses are done in contrast. Uh, so that's Cryol Brown there on a dark grey uh, primer. Um, and obviously uh, Black Templar for the other horse. Um, any of the uh, reins here as well, they're all Cryol Brown on both models. Um, which, you, yeah, looks looks really good. Really, really good. Sorry, not Cryol Brown, what am I talking about? Gargant Fur. Um, for these horses and this is cryo brown um, but the blue I did was um, space horse blue um, and I did two coats of that on there uh, really good I will be doing a uh, this oak leaf camo in a tutorial um, I'll be honest with you I don't think I'm that good at it um, I don't think you know I've seen some other tutorials out there with uh, how they do German oak leaf camo and stuff and uh, they, they are really good, but I'll do I'll do one for uh, people want to see it. I really like this helmet, and I don't know why. No idea why it looks just looks different to the others. You know, comments below if you know what it is. If it is different, um, if they were issued with different style style of helmet, but I, I, for some reason I really like it. It looks just the pose on the model looks really good. I was tempted to put the officer's head on that horse because there's obviously his hands are, is across, but I think that's what a lot of people would do. So I thought. Nah, I'll stick it on the different, stick it on the other horse for just just for the lulls because I think it looks better. Um, but yeah, um, these have had a varnish. Um, this matte varnish from um, Games Workshop. But yeah, no, I'm really happy with them. Really, really happy how they've come out. But uh, one more unit to go. Oh, two actually, two more units to go. And um, yeah, see you in a sec. Right then, last um, last infantry unit anyway. Um, these are Royal Navy uh, section. Uh, they're going to be used in the Operation Sea Lion campaign. Uh, five guys, so I can use them straight off the bat. Um, really excited about using these. They've got some cool rules to go with them. Uh, I really like how I've done the uh, Molotov uh, cocktail on this guy. Again, contrast. So it's using Warp Lightning just there, and uh, I've got the yellow and the red. But while they were still um, still wet, I just mixed them in a bit, and I think it turned out really nice. Um, really falling in love for some reason with metal minis. I don't know what it is at the minute, but I just like the individuality of them. I think with a plastic set you can make six different guys, but when you've got 30 of them, um, it's a bit different. Because I'm thinking maybe, because obviously you don't have to just stick with Warlord, um, as I was saying earlier on um, in the ramble. Uh, you can see other, other, uh, other guys out there that, and girls that do different models. Uh, Bag Squiggo Miniatures, she does um, some really cool Scots for, for females, really really cool. Um, there's loads, I've got some um, models coming from uh, smaller independent manufacturers just to show you guys off, show them off to you. Um, I got in contact with a few few uh, different manufacturers and I've asked if I could get a couple of their models just to show you and I'll, I'll paint them up. 
and um, one it's nice to go in the army and two it's really nice to be able to show you a variety of these smaller independent manufacturers compared to like say warlord and games workshop give them the same line line because some of their sculpts are fantastic i was looking at some home guard sculpts and i thought you could mix it up with like um Warlords, so you've got say you've got ten sculpts of warlords, and uh, you I don't know another company that do ten sculpts. They're all different. As long as they're you know twenty eight mil, they're gonna look really good together. So you've got a bit of variety in your squads when you're playing and stuff. Um, but yeah, no these these what these guys come out really well. I had to do the the petty officer's uniform darker. Um, you might notice you, you don't see as much contrast in him. I did two or three coats of the ultramarines blue because this is ultramarines blue. Um, and the other blue is Tesla blue or Tesla blue. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but that's the blue around there. Um, the white is actually uh, celestial grey from Games Workshop. It's not even. It's not pure white. I found pure whites just don't work as well to make a white colour. It's really weird. Uh, celestial grey for that, um, and also just inside. In there, I've uh, just put a wash. Well, it's not even a wash. It, I've used apothecary white over the top of the celestial grey. Um, just darkens it up a little bit. But yeah, these are really quick and easy to paint up as well, because uh, there's not much to them. But yeah, that's the uh, last of the infantry, and um, I shall show you uh, the last unit. Right. <laughs> there's a big tank on the screen. Oh yes. <laughs> I'm pretty much calling this tank done. Um, I'm not painted a lot of vehicles. This is my first airbrushed painted tank. Um, I think the the stripes are really nice. Um, I've done a little bit of weathering on it. I might go back and just the only thing I might do is go back and try and do some mud. Um, but that is about it. Apart from that, I'll call it done. I was a little bit heavy on the chipping, I can see, but you know it's down to experience. I'll be a bit lighter next time, but I think it works. Uh, I think it's a good tabletop standard. Um, this is my first proper like go at building a tank that I'm really happy with. And this is the Rubicon kit. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> it was so nice to put together and not the tracks alone. The tracks are fantastic because they're one solid unit, one solid piece, and they just they just slide on and you don't have to fiddle about with them. And it's like, oh my god, that is amazing. Uh, the side skirts again they were really easy to put on um the whole thing is just is just great they give you a great selection of decals I, uh, all my all my vehicles are coming from rubicon they're, they're simple if i can get it at rubicon i'll i'll even pay full price which is crazy i never pay full price <laughs> but for rubicon stuff i would i'm more than happy to pay full price um absolutely love it absolutely love it indeed i know some of their vehicles as well you've got like detail inside and stuff and just oh, it's just an amazing model absolutely amazing and it's got that super heavy anti-tank gun <laughs> 10 plus uh, armor penetration on the front as well uh, which is really nice liam hates it oh he hates it it's his worst enemy uh his t-34 was uh, on the other side of the board when we were playing up at warlord hello super heavy anti-tank gun bye bye <laughs> He cried and cried and cried. The salt was real. <laughs> His IS-2 can't even touch it. Oh, it's so good. If you get frontal armour with this thing, it's a real nightmare. Real nightmare to get rid of. Um, but yeah, happy days. But that's all of the uh, models I did during my week off. Uh, like I said um, earlier on in the video, hobby burnout's a real thing. It can happen to any of us at any time. Um, Luckily, I'm not completely there at the minute. I'm getting close, but I'm not there yet. And, um, yeah, we'll get through it together. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again real soon.